Welcome back to the promotion tournament where Schalke and Nolafir are looking to increase their lead against the mysterious monkeys. A strong game one from them, although fraught with danger, it would seem a river is not a safe place to be if you're either of these teams. No, it isn't a safe place to be. Neither is a Baron pit at a lot of these moments in that game. Um, heavily dictated towards the end by those Baron takes. I think when we go all the way back to champion select, uh, we have to look at how our expectations of bottom lane played because upset he didn't draft that losing bottom mm -hmm. lane that scaled later on that we expected, but had a fantastic game on the Varus, uh, turned into more of that poke team fighting, which looked great. Yeah, 6-0-6 six, six at the end of that game, went unkilled. Saw a couple of great mechanical outplays by him actually on kickers as well. An instant QSS yep. in that bottom lane that I remember as well. He's a very strong player when he sets his mind to it. And the partnership was great between uh, Upset and Norsker and always looking for those catches, always trying to just get the crowd control out and safety with the Lantern as well. So that's what we liked seeing out of the bottom lane out of Schalke. One lane that maybe didn't quite work so well, but fit within the, the play style and ultimately ended up winning the game for Schalke was the top lane. And you look at Smitty J's performance, uh, the stats won't reflect the fact that his TP basically won the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's he went 0-5-3 yeah. at the end of it, but there was a lot of focus up towards that yes, top side. Memento was. started off top and then didn't actually visit the lane that many times, whereas we saw the entirety of the mysterious monkeys work their way up towards the top side of the map very early on. I want to come back to that sort of idea of playstyle and how these teams are going to develop and adapt across the course of a best of five stress. Schalke didn't go for the playstyle we expected from them, didn't focus towards a losing bottom lane with strength in the other lanes. Rather, they went much more towards a pure top lane powerhouse and a uh, bot lane that could trade well in lane. Yeah, it was a, a little bit of a mix of what they did in the regular season and then a little edge with the bottom lane winning matchup. I want to see whether the same thing happens again. Remember, we're on 7-16. A new ban, uh, at least on the red side, comes out. Mysterious Monkeys banning the Gallio. It was banned in game one on the blue side. Now, this is a new ban for the series of the Janna coming out. This is a ban that is a very disengaged focus. Along with that, Gragas, Schalke basically saying, we don't want you getting rid of our engaged potential. And it means you have to ban the Zac, yep. your mysterious monkeys, unless Amazing has been practicing his Xerxes cosplay and has practiced the jungle poppy. <laughs> getting rid of the Janna makes a lot of sense. Now, that leaves the Caitlyn unbanned. Of course, 716, she did receive a few nerfs towards her mid game when it comes to her Q and her traps. Another ban from the last game was that Jarvan that was available, and that is now picked up. A blue side flex, which is a little uncharacteristic, but it still is the same. Could be top lane. It's one of Smitty J's most played champions at the regular split. And you have to imagine Memento. It's in his wheelhouse. Javan Jungle has been popular for weeks now. Gives them engaged potential, and you've taken away a lot of the disengage. Did take away the Alistair in the last game as well on the side of Mysterious Monkeys. They will pick that one up for themselves alongside the Elise Jungle for Amazing. Hasn't always been the best on these early game junglers, usually prioritizing getting a tank or a utility jungler, which we actually saw work out quite well for him in game one. We did see it work out well in game one. Now with the Tristana taken away, remember we were talking about how Tristana, one of the best remaining AD carries in game one. Schalke is sticking to a lot of the same picks as game one here. I want to touch on whether Janna also can come in and now punish the Schalke ever so slightly. Uh, remember Schalke struggled against the Janna when they were playing the Alistair. Now they don't have that as an option for themselves, should they want to pick that. That was against Team RB, because things Janna heavily denied Norskarens. Alice to play. And it's an interesting uh, dilemma as well because they did an interview about that afterwards yeah. with, uh, I think it was with Slingshot, and they said, we don't actually see many other counters to Alistair apart from the Janna in the lane. You know, Morgana can kind of work, but it's very difficult to use the spell shield effectively. And apart from that, you really struggle to think of any direct counters. Maybe Braum is a possibility, but Mysterious Monkeys, after picking up this Zaya, now have banned priority and can look towards that AD uh, that uh, support or even the mid lane. So I've had one of the questions mulling around in my brain for 716. Talking back on that, Caitlyn, I want to touch on it because Zaya was locked in. Now, I feel like the Zaya was the option here because I wonder if Caitlyn's mid game would be heavily outdone by the Tristana, the Jace, the Jarvan that can force fights. And if Caitlyn doesn't have flash, suddenly you end up dying. I wonder whether that's why you've got the Zaya. You have the ultimate to avoid a bit of damage. You've got the crowd control coming through. But we are into ban phase two coming through. We'll track that AD carry matchup as we go further through the draft. And we were talking about how Schalke and Ulfir are going to change their draft. 
or change their playstyle coming into this tournament. It's actually been Serious Monkeys that have entirely changed the way they're drafting this lane. You've know, got a really aggressive bottom lane yep. with the Alistair and with the Zaya. You've got the Elise for the early jungle presence, which you didn't see from Amazing in the last game. They are the ones who think they need to adapt quite heavily here to face into Schalke. Now, MM have a bottom lane that can be aggressive. Uh, Alistair, sometimes you'll see him if he's up against a ranged champion now and dual ranged in the bottom lane, that undoes the Alistair, so it does force him to play a little bit more defensively, a little less aggressive, and I wonder whether Schalke will look to draft the likes of a Morgana, which ironically, Norsker and said it's very difficult to make work against Alistair in the very same interview that they talked about Jana with Slingshot Esports. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, Mysterious Monkey's gonna get the Gnar for the top lane. Shalko, we talked about a possible flex from the Jarman early on. Not gonna be flexed as we've got the Jace now. and now the Cassiopeia for Cage. That means it is the Jace up in the top lane against the Gnar, which is a good matchup that a lot of coaches, a lot of top laners talk about. Good matchup when you look at lane presence. Now, Gnar has more team fighting potential up against the likes of a Jace. There is, however, a team fight coming through when you've got a Cassiopeia in the mix, you've got a Braum to kind of play a disengage, and Schalke already have a Javan, so I don't know whether that's the biggest concern for Schalke, is that, oh, maybe our top laner can't quite team fight as well as we would like. It's going to be a Talia for Mysterious Monkeys to round it out, and Schalke haven't really relied on Smitty J to team fight that effectively. In fact, I think he did minimal work in <laughs> team fights in, yeah. in the last game, although his long lane shot blasts were always on point. Mysterious Monkeys going for Talia in mid, something Koscu has played a few times across the course of the split, but as a composition, they seem to have this team fight slash zone control organization going on. Yeah, I wonder whether Mysterious Monkeys will continue to look topside, bring the Talia up as well. You've got the Elise to try and get the Nara ahead. You've got a squishy matchup against it with the Jace. That's one option for MM, and then you at least have Yuki on a team fighting AD carry. That's what we say he likes to play. We've seen that in the LCS. Schalke, on the other hand, this is a little more back to what we saw in the playoffs. It's a Tristana who is going to take a little bit of a step backwards with the Braum, might not necessarily have full control over the laning phase, still good. Casio still good, but might have to take a step back for the first 10 minutes of the game or so, and then look to get in later on. Now we have to question where does Memento go? We have to watch, wait to see that play and see whether it's that play style coming out once again where he looks to the bottom side to try and offset some of this difficulty, unlike in game one. And it's interesting we talk about the, the different styles from both of these teams because it's very difficult to dive into the separate styles of Mysterious Monkeys. They haven't really shown us much more than a, a singular strategy throughout the course of the split. Perhaps this game will be the one in which they do prove themselves to have a little more than one string to their bow. They certainly do have the option. Nara, an exceptional team fighter. If Kikis TPs. That's the problem, is Kikis, at times, holds his TP for yep. a very long time. A lot of the time that actually gets extra objectives for Mysterious Monkey. So you can see why that is one of the, the pitfalls in quotes <laughs> that sometimes MM fall to, because sometimes it does have that benefit. Definitely can. Schalke Nullfear 1 0 up in this best of five. The winner of this goes into the upper bracket and only needs to win one more best of five series to get four. back into the LCS or into the LCS. Actually, back into the LCS for both of these guys, because Mysterious Monkeys are going to be, or they'd stay in the LCS. I'm technically, technically stress. Mysterious Monkeys stay in the LCS and Shao Kanulfir get back into the LCS. But I kind of want to think of I'll both of these teams as out. out of the LCS Medic. at the moment. So Medic. they're both going to get back into the LCS. It doesn't matter whether you're in or you're out, you're hot or you're cold, you're yes or you're no. Whoever wins this goes to the winner's bracket. The winner of that ends up in LCS. I don't, we don't need any other quantifiers on it. Well, let's have some quantifiers on to how, as to how these teams are going to play stress. So, Schalke Nullfear once again picking the Jace, getting scaling in their mid lane and in their AD carry. Is there a particular break point they are waiting for before they can start really trying to take the game to the Mysterious Monkeys? It's almost like that Schalke 15 minute alarm is going to go off and suddenly they'll start to fight. I think that may not synergize the best with the, like the Trisana, the Casio. Maybe they need a little more time, but we know that's when Schalke like to make those plays, like to try and get there when they're on that one and a half to two item point.
There's a lot of uh, champions, or at least in the mid lane in this game, that have had adaptations on 716, nerfs actually for both of these champions, around the mana cost. So basically, Cassiopeia, to talk about the mid lane, has lost mana from her base mana pool. It actually results in having one less Twin Fang to start the game from her mana pool. Uh, the Talia for Cosq, the mana cost of Q increased. That denies some of her wave clear. So Talia has been hit in the ability to push. Cassio has been hit minor amount in the ability to trade. I want to see how that actually plays out in this laning phase because we get to see two nerf champions against each other. Especially with two individual players that we, we rank quite similarly. Yeah. They're on a very equal sort of playing field, a very equal footing as individuals. Have to see if they can one of them can take the advantage over the other. And while both of these champions are very meta, I would say almost they're playing the opposite person's champion. I always associate Cos-Q with the Cassiopeia. Now, Cadrill does play it a lot too, but I would imagine Cadrill to be the more ready player to bring out the Talia. So very interesting matchup. We will track that as we go through this game. Memento. Once again, coming for oh. the evade, gets the steal as well. And amazing. We'll have to back away. Jumps up with the Cocoon, but Amazing, a player who has prided himself on consistently winning promotion tournaments once again loses an early Ooh, battle. Now is trade. not done yet. Amazing gets forced back another cocoon, but Amazing is just losing his entire jungle. Going back across Amazing's history, though, four wins, two with Copenhagen Wolves, one with Origin, one with Fnatic, and now perhaps one with the Mysterious Monkeys. But he seems to have to be more of a carry for the Mysterious Monkeys than he was for any of these other lineups. That is fair. And we saw him getting pushed out in the top side once. Now Memento to go in. No. Ooh, Kikis managed to jump out of the way of Memento just in time. Didn't get knocked up on that exchange. So across the map, a couple of trades back and forth. Amazing. Pushed out of the jungle. Bottom lane, Schalke ended up taking a bit of a rough trade. We spoke briefly in the first game about the Tristana, the Braum, how their interactions can actually work. You stack up the Braum passive and jump forward. Very effective to go aggressive. We'll see commonly people die at level two or three to that strategy, but amazing now trying to compensate and looking for a push on Cadrill. Good flash. Had to flash away from the seismic shove. As soon as you see amazing coming out from the bushes, you know that you will lose that trade. It was, of course, Fnatic Academy that Amazing qualified for, not Fnatic, as I said. They've been in the LCS for a lot longer than <laughs> a few of these guys. Kick is qualified with him on Fnatic Academy in that spring promotion tournament. And uh, now we, we're going to see how well Mysterious Monkeys can adapt to the changes that Schalke have brought out, because this is more of the general Schalke style we tended to see. Mysterious Monkeys have switched their lineup around a little bit with Amazing having to be a bit more aggressive early on. And already he has fallen behind Memento in terms of getting those buffs and getting those objectives early on. And Memento, remember, visited top side, didn't get a summoner out of Kikis. Now Amazing looking back again. No flash, remember, for Cadrill. And gonna get the seismic shove down onto Kedro. He uses the heal. Memento's here. Kedro oh. will finally take a rock to the back. And Memento is unable to save his mid laner. Kedro pushing forward. He talked about how uh, the Talia maybe has a little bit more of a difficult time pushing the wave out. Well, if you allow the Cassio to push forward with no flash available, then suddenly you can actually get that kill to work. And all of the work from Memento and everything on the top side of the map and Amazing finally manages to re-emerge through that middle lane play. And part of it is the experience that Amazing has over Memento. Memento are one of the more experienced members on the Schalke Fear roster, but still only about a quarter of the games that Amazing has played in the European LCS. And you have to remember, Amazing played in the North American LCS as well, Stress, so that number is padded out even more. A strong early start here for the Mysterious Monkeys. This is what we wanted to see from them. And now the question arises, how much can Koscu do when he has a lead over an enemy mid lane? It is something we rarely saw in the EU LCS. We rarely saw a lead for Koscu. This game has started in a similar fashion to how the previous game started, where it was, remember, Mysterious Monkeys got an initial kill, then followed it up with two further kills for themselves, but then couldn't quite play this playstyle. I feel like Mysterious Monkeys will have a slightly easier time now. Yes, Nar is behind. To be expected against a Jace that has had 
jungle presence in the top lane as well, especially when Mysterious Monkeys have lost the jungle matchup earlier on in the game anyway. I feel like Kikis will once again try and scale into the matchup later on, but that means a little extra time. The key is going to be team fighting. Team fighting and skirmishes around about that 15 minute mark is when both teams like to come online. Amazing flash straight away from upset as Smitty J was on his way down. And actually, this is something we've seen so much from Shalko in the Challenger series and in playoffs. They are now the one to go for the early rotation. Mysterious Monkeys did it in game one. Shalka say, nope, we're getting out of this laning phase. We're going to move our bot lane up towards top. And you can see why this play is made here, because they're ending up going uh, on a situation where the mid lane, uh, the bottom lane was actually in a neutral spot for Yuki. So he doesn't have the aggressive push. But when you've got the Tristana, you can actually compensate for any early presence out of Mysterious Monkeys' play. But look, Kikis can cut the wave underneath it. Oh, Upset actually getting caught. Whew, wow, nearly, nearly getting logged under the tower. And this ends up being in favor of Mysterious Monkeys. That wave wasn't anywhere near enough to stay under the tower. <laughs> Mysterious Monkeys get the first tower. I was drinking during that stretch. I know, like, I, I had nearly some water got in my mouth. I almost spat it out everywhere. It surprised me. And perhaps it surprised Shalka Nolfir as well as Upset. Did just jump away, they will lose out on the first tower blood. Something Shalko have been a lot better at doing than Mysterious Monkeys across the course of the split. But this is what we wanted to see, Stress. This is the adaptation, this is Mysterious Monkeys taking a bit more of an advantage in the early game. And this, if they can snowball this advantage away, perhaps we'll see Mysterious Monkeys on that scoreboard. And we're too early for a Rift Herald play to come through out of Shalka, so it ends up being that Mysterious Monkeys get the dragon from it. They exchange it for a red buff. Pretty sure Amazing and Mysterious Monkeys will say, okay, thank you for that. That'll be fine. We don't really need the red buff. I don't. As much as the experience is nice, I'll get some extra on the dragon on the bottom side, get everything else. Okay, so we're looking at Cadral and Upset for Shalka to look to scale a little bit. We have to question whether Smitty J can go out on the side lane and make his presence felt and then see whether Mysterious Monkeys actually compensate for that by sending the likes of a Cosq, of a Kikis, two versus one against Smitty J. See if they can actually punish him for any kind of push. Okay. Approaching the 10 minute mark of the game, Mysterious Monkeys have about a 500 gold lead, very similar to game one. And actually it's this time Smitty J who is going down the lethality route. Probably gonna be an Essence Reaver, that's more along the lines of what we see from Jace's rather than a pure Dusk Blade. Now, if we do end up seeing um, any of that lethality build come through, uh, maybe the Ghost Blade is another option uh, that would come through on this. I didn't mean Essence Reaver. I was going to say, Essence I, Reaver doesn't build out of the I didn't want. I didn't want to call you out no, here. No, it's no, not call a me out. That was Warhammer. entirely wrong stress. <laughs> that was, I meant Yumu's Ghost no, Blade. I did not mean Essence Reaver. Well. There's going to be a wall here. We can put a wall behind this and end up moving forward on this game, Medic. But I think MM committing to the tower on the top side easily will take that one down. And they don't lose a tower in the bot side. So now Mysterious Monkeys get another tower unanswered from Shalka Null Fear. And we'll have to see if Shalka can eventually take a tower in response. I know where you were going on it, though. Look, Essence Reaver on Yuki. That's who was building it. That's what you were where at. I was going. Uh, of course, build towards the later game for that Zaya to come through more damage, whereas on the opposite side, upset, very common route we've seen from people on the Tristana, picking up the Berserker's Greaves for themselves. That allows you to get into lane, the attack speed. However, oh, ult comes through Flash Forced. So it's Kikis. not actually the Mysterious Monkeys who are putting pressure on towards the Split Pusher. Mm -hmm. It is Shalka Null Fear who are pressuring the Split Pusher. Shalka step back with Smitty J, they lose a Rift Held, and because of that, Mysterious Monkeys are able to still take the advantage. Right, and, and the important thing here is Mysterious Monkeys, their position on the map has been such that they can take the advantageous trades. Although going to Rift Herald does mean you can't punish Smitty J, what it does mean is you'll be able to likely crack mid tower soon. They got bottom tower, remember, for Mysterious Monkeys, then get the dragon. They go top side, get top tower, then go for the Rift Herald. Within four minutes, Mysterious Monkeys have picked up four objectives and given away two for it. And that is such a good trade for MM. The, the Cloud Drake will let them reposition quite effectively. And now they can try and break this Cassiopeia line. And this is exactly what we expected to see compared to the first game as well, because Mysterious Monkeys did exactly the same thing. But 
as the game got later on, it was Schalke who came out on top. Upset, such a great carry, ending that game 6-0, 6-0. And across the course of the split, he has had an incredible, incredible performance as a well stress topping the numbers in kill percentage, very high in damage percent as well. And this CSD, that's the laning disadvantage we talk about. Yeah, the one that Schalke draft into. It isn't necessarily about upset as a player, but the matchups you are given and holding them to a moderate position. A lot of the time he's been in disadvantageous matchups. RB, he was playing up against Callista four games in a row. That is where a lot of that deficit comes from, which Schalke, assume and, you know, basically think of as an acceptable deficit for upset because we know his strength comes later into the game. Again, that'll happen on this Tristana. It's not so much that, that Zaya will crush a Tristana at all, but we know that Tristana also scales very well, very safe later into the game. Stress, I want to establish some expectations for myself because as a play-by-play -play caster, sometimes I don't don't know when a team is going to be good. I don't know when a team is going to be able to make the big plays. And I, I think we can both agree that Schalke are just looking for the late game. And the later the game gets for Schalke, the better it is, because they've got this scaling Casio and they've got this scaling Trist and they scale all over the place. But <laughs> Mysterious Monkeys, we say they want a team fight. We say they want to go for these engages. How do they actually do that? How do they actually set up these plays that they want to have? So a lot of it is going to be based on using Dreams and Amazing together, move in, control areas like the Baron Pit where you can deny vision, use Kikis on the side lane to create pressure in a second place and then bring him in. Now this is to make sure they can use the Rift Hell to their advantage. Look, Norskaren and Kayla are a little caught here, but there's no minion wave again. Norskaren! So low, he actually manages to survive. Amazing jumps in, but there is the Feather Storm, a kill. The tower does manage to keep itself alive as Mysterious Monkeys will eventually push it in. There's their third turret of the game and with it, a 2,000 gold lead. It feels like Mysterious Monkeys have had deliberate practice on Rift Herald play because it is exactly the same thing that happened in game one. Different champion setups, but that doesn't matter. It's Rift Herald after you've killed the enemy wave. Rift Herald crushes through the tower. You use engage tools as the Rift Herald aggressively charges. And as your wave crashes in, you get a kill, you get the tower, and you get out of there. Very similar to game number one. Feels very practiced and very set piece-like. And the ability to lock off some yeah. of the enemy team with this a wall as well, it's just absolutely beautiful. Yeah, exactly, and then MM look forward, they know they can get the damage down onto Norska, and Amazing gets himself out of there, Yuki gets out as well, and the tower falls in their favor. Kikis even making sure he didn't have to use his TP by coming to the middle lane. It, look, it looks clean. Game one, okay, Dreams died when they did it, but that's an acceptable loss. Both times it's been a support that died. Yeah. This time it was Norska, and last time it was Dreams. Maybe next time they get a mid laner or an AD carry, you never know. And uh, coming back to that idea of deliberate preparation for a specific set play, it's something we see a lot in sports. So they yeah. say, this is the free kick we want to run, and this is exactly how we run it. And people say, oh, but the enemy team can adapt. The enemy team can change the way they defend against it. But at this sort of level, the speed of reaction is not going to be as quick as if you're playing against Fnatic or G2. So having these set plays, having these strategies that you use time and time again, can actually be incredibly beneficial uh, to keep yourself in the LCS. And, and that's the thing is like a clean play with a setup that you've done 10 times, the enemy might have only played against this once or twice. And I don't know whether it's necessarily against like a Fnatic or a G2 who do have more experience adapting, but certainly being sure in the way that you're setting up plays can go a very long way. And that, again, wraps all the way back to the experience factor for Kikis and Amazing because they have they have taken teams from different levels. Kikis has done it, Amazing has done it all the way through Challenger where they have been able to impress some of their knowledge and the way that you play the game onto the lesser experienced players. And you have to feel like to some extent that is happening again with Mysterious Monkeys. And it's the early game where they're really being able to show up. And that's the right. portion of the game that you get to practice more because it's easier to play a 20 minute match than it is to play a 45 minute match <laughs> time and time again, Stress. And I think that's where we see Mysterious Monkeys having this strong early game, but their later game perhaps not being as tight and as clean as some of these earlier plays. Very true. Very, very true. And we actually heard Upset talking a little bit, again, in an interview earlier in the week, where he was saying that playing with Vanda helped him get to that level. And now almost he's giving that over to Norskaren as part of that experienced play. So both teams 
we already mentioned this going into game one, are in a very different position to the last time that a lot of these players faced off against each other. And that's why there's this very complex back and forth presence in the game here and why it's difficult to separate both of these teams. And alongside that, there's a an emotional element to it, a mental element to it, because firstly, going going behind can definitely make you struggle in a series, but also playing against a team that knocked you out of playoffs <laughs> can make you struggle as Memento tries to knock up Kikis in the bottom lane. It is this 2v2 that we talked about. The rest of Mysterious Monkeys are on their Ooh. way down. The Nar does not knock back Memento, but here comes the Weaver's Wall. Where are the rest of Schalke? They're in the other lanes. The carries are not here, and they have no way of getting here. Schalke will have to flash away and give up the tower. Two important flashes used here in exchange for MM getting the tower. A couple of ultimates, yes, Mysterious Monkeys used the Weaver's Wall, the Nara as well, but that's fine. And that's what they want to trade for flashes because they'll be back available sooner than the enemy's flash. You mentioned Upset being in the middle lane away from the fight. The reason he is so hellbent on farming is because his itemization was in an awkward spot. He had a pickaxe, he had a zeal, he's not going to be F sword. He's halfway between an Infinity Edge and the Static Shiv or the Rapid Fire Cannon, but he doesn't have either yet, and he needs more time. We spoke about 15 to 20 minutes is roughly when Schalke want to hit that go point. But if they don't have the items, if they're stuck in between the items, they won't be able to get that effective team fight going. Is a 2,000 gold lead for the Mysterious Monkeys, but we are starting to get to that one and a half item point, that one and a half item go button, that one and a half item, green light for Schalke Null Fear. They lost a lot, they've conceded four towers to only two, where usually they're the team that take so many more towers than their opponents, but Mysterious Monkeys have been able to play the map a lot better this game. In game one, it was Schalke pulling them around the map, now it seems to be Mysterious Monkeys, the one on the front foot making these plays. And a lot of the difference between the teams is actually compensated by the fact Smitty J for a second game in a row, has this Jace has a CS lead up against Kikis. Kikis more comfortable to play around the rest of the team in this game. Memento has maintained a 40 CS lead from the jungle for the last nine or so minutes. It actually ties him even on gold with Amazing at this point, and that farm is helping him to stay relevant. But as you said, Mysterious Monkeys, more focus on the objectives. Two Cloud Drakes on top of those towers already means that when they want to fight, they're very quick to try and get that pick, whether it's the Elise, whether it's using Cosq to get the Weaver's Wall down. Mysterious Monkeys can make a decision to go very quickly. What people like me will be thrilled to see is Mysterious Monkeys moving forward, getting this vision control. We said it, dreams and amazing. Step forward, get vision, go for the Baron, set up in this river, and then we'll start to see Schalke having to react, starting to have to actually make plays around the vision control that Mysterious Monkeys have got. And we see Schalke as their four man are actually gonna push up towards this river here. They are slightly behind in terms of item, perhaps a half item, a full item here or there. Memento gets knocked back, and koscu has been on point with this Talia thus he far. He has. He's looked good. We've seen it from him a, a couple of times, but uh, one thing we just saw happen is part of the reason why Schalke hasn't been as aggressive is Memento is still quite squishy. He doesn't yet have a second item completed. You can see he's got a chain vest. He's got a Kindle gem on top of it, but he can't reliably go aggressive and know they're going to kill whoever he goes on to without him dying. Memento is the primary engage for this team. They need it to stick. They need to get whoever he jumps on. And when there's flash, 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 everybody on Mysterious Monkeys, that is not a certain kill. And it's more likely a Memento without his flash will die in exchange for just a summoner. This is the objective control we saw out of the Mysterious Monkeys when Kickers and Amazing first joined the team in week four of the LCS. This will be their third dragon of the game, only 20 Whoa. minutes in, but Amazing's dead. That was quick. They do get a dragon, though. Yeah, well, trade, we, trade. we said if they can get that fight going, if they know they can kill someone, that's what Schalke want to do. And it looked like they caught Amazing when there was nobody else from Mysterious Monkeys around. I believe maybe it was Cosq up on the top side. Two members of MM were on that dragon taking it down at the same time, but Schalke, maybe that is the pick that halts the MM onslaught. It may do. There's still a thousand gold lead for the Mysterious Monkeys, and they have three dragons. And Schalke haven't actually been able to take too much off of this. They didn't even get much deep vision control. They're going to push out the waves once again. 
they will continue to scale, and they scale so well into the late game that perhaps they just want to slow this game down a little bit more. Ah, so it wasn't Cos Q, Cos Q was actually at the Dragon. It was just Yuki and Dreams that was around, and that was Shalka knowing they were five people stacked, and it didn't matter whether MM were all five members there. They assumed they weren't because of the way they had controlled division around Dragon earlier, they being MM, and Shalka just go. They pounce, say, okay, just amazing, he's not tanky enough, we can take him out. Uh, this is reminiscent of game one, and they're not quite in the position they were in game one to do this, but Schalke with another ballsy Baron play. TB coming out from Kigas. They've got Cassio as well, we'll get it down to 2000 HP, and jump across oh, the wall. Oh, he's another steal for Mysterious Monkeys, and now perhaps they'll look for the fight. I cannot believe Amazing saw that twice, as oh. Kigas jumps in, and three-man Nard draws them back. Schalke, no fear, continue to fall. A double kill for Coscu. Norskeren has to flash the wall, but Schalke once again Ball at Baron. And Mysterious Monkeys capitalize with swift judgment. In comes Kikis early on this. It was before the Baron had even got taken. He TPs in. Norskaren's trying to execute at this point. Oh. <laughs> oh, Dreams nearly got him. But the important thing is in mid lane right now, it, it almost feels like Schalke was saying, okay, we, we did this previously. We're going to commit to it because we want to grab Kikis. We want to get his TP out and then weren't quite prepared for the fight on the back end. Whereas Mysterious Monkey said, okay, Weaver's Wall's going to come through. You're locked in the pit. Here comes the team fight Warn are ready to take. And now they're continuing to march forward through the base. Damage down onto Memento as the tower goes down. They're going to get at least two towers off this singular push with the Baron, and then they still have two and a half minutes of the Baron to push with. Another Infernal for them up next as well, if they do decide to take that. This is what we wanted to see from the Mysterious Monkeys. Perhaps more a misplay from Schalke, though, as they went for the Baron without that pure advantage they had in game one. You can see why they're committing in the sense that they're saying, okay, we need kickers to come across, we've got it low. Amazing for the second time in two games, steals away the Baron, and already Mysterious Monkeys have won this fight, but Kikis catches three with the Nar, even catches both Cable and Upset with the Wallop on the back end of that, and Mysterious Monkeys, this is a, a basically a game-winning play from this. The steal into the critical damage through the mid lane, plus the kills on top of it, has separated these teams so far that Schalke have a lot of time that they're going to have to wait before they can get back into this game. No Archangels on Cadral. Tristan is only on two items, whereas Zaya is closer to a third item. The Baron buff is in effect for 1 minute 30 still. MM looking great position to tie this series up. 25 minutes in, they're going to have a 6,000 gold lead. Extended that so much. And now we're going to start to see more items completed. You've got Essence Reaver Static Sheep. You've got a Bramble Vest on Kickers as well. Works so well into this double AD carry. And into the Jace on the side lane as well. If ever they're 1v1, Norskaren could be just dead here. Glacial Fisher comes out. Memento is dodging around, but it's another kill from the Mysterious Monkeys as they look dominant in this game stress. Yeah, this has looked clean over the last five minutes. Of course, a lot of it has come from Schalke playing into their hands. But remember, the last time Mysterious Monkeys were in the bottom lane, they went aggressive with the Talia wall, managed to get the tower down. This has been way better, a lot more clean, almost more focused out of MM on a game plan. And you've seen the strength that this added team fight aspect has for the Nard. This time it doesn't hit. It doesn't hit. Yeah, Pedro dies to the Petrifying Gaze onto Dreams, but already the inhibitor has fallen. And as much as Shao Nofir made the mistake, it was the mysterious monkeys that forced them to make the mistake. MM had the lead, they had the game in their hand. And look at how far they've been able to extend that lead now. 7,000 gold ahead, items ahead across the board as well. And they are looking to equalize this series at one and one. Games like this, to me, remind me of why Nar is one of the absolute strongest top laners right now. He's a safe blind pick. This game, he was picked into the Jace. I recognize that. But look, he has weaknesses in both Mini Nar and Mega Nar form. But so few champions can actually contend with both. The fact he has good team fighting, good side lane push, good presence at all points in the game, survivability, damage, threats, tankiness, so much goes into this. And Nara is a champion that has been figured out. Easy to punish enemy mistakes on. Kato dodges the cocoon, but Yuki's on a killing spree. This AD carry played well in game one, but is playing astronomically better in this game too. 3-0-2 now on the Zaya. 
Coming back to that top lane point as well, Stress, this is why people say Kikis is better than Smitty J, because you said, and we said in Picks and Bands, Jace is a good matchup into the NAR. And even with that, Kikis hasn't died, and he's been able to impact the game. It is early on, uh, and we saw Smitty J have that presence. Now, Kikis, especially with the Bramble Vest, past Frozen Mallet, plus, past Black Cleaver, should be able to, be, to trade against the Jace. Yes, Jace will have a considerable amount of damage, but Kikis should be in control of this. They're so far ahead right now. Uh, he is 600 gold up on the individual lane, but a lot of it is to do with the amount of lane uh, geography that Kikis has to work with. Long lanes in his favor. Smitty J can only be by his base. There's so much room to work with that this Nar has a lot of freedom on top of that as well. Dragons in the mix as well. The Cloud Drake slides into chase down before they get into combat, of course, and extra damage too. I think double Infernal. Yeah, so that I, helps I'd be too. eyeing that one up slightly more than I'd be eyeing up the clouds. And it's a third Infernal as well. Mysterious Monkeys are looking like they should be able to close out this game, but how exactly do they do it, Stress? Because we've got a minute and a half on the Baron, we've got the Inferno coming up at about six, they've got two inhibitors down. Is it purely about waiting for Baron and then going for the push? So at this point, it's about a, a establishing the control of Vision up through top side, pushing out top, making sure mid remains pushed, because you know Schalke are gonna commit two or three people to try and de-push the uh, super minions that are coming. You know Smitty J has teleport, so you can try and make a play to draw the teleport out now so that when the Baron is available, Smitty J has to commit to the bottom side and cannot make it there. That could be one of the aggressive plays that MM try and make here, and that would be the objective. But Kikis is up on the top side too. He's, remember, pushing out top side. That's one of the steps important here. So it might be a slow wait for Baron as you anticipated it. Have to wait and see if Mysterious Monkeys are willing to take the fight. They have got a, a wave pushing in that top lane. They could just lock it out with the wall as we have seen them do before. Kikis joining up with the rest of his squad as is Smithy J. There's an 8,000 gold lead. Well, 7,000 gold lead still for the Mysterious Monkey there in a very strong position coming into this final push. So upset up two, three items here. Was the Weaver's Wall looking for a play on the top tower here? But the wave gets played out pretty quickly by Upset with that Static Shiv. And you cannot forego Smitty J's damage as well. And a lot of it is dragging up Schalke up to the top side, trying to deny Smitty J from clearing the wave further away from the base to give Schalke more time. Bot lane will push in. Mysterious Monkeys will retreat back. 15 seconds to go. Out go the wards, the sweepers. Just go through the jungle. And MM should, should have a comfortable Baron take here. The Serious Monkeys have had almost total control of this game since very early on. Schalke have yet to lose on blue side this split, but Mysterious Monkeys are looking to prove that wrong. Kikis continues to run onto Kegel, who has to flash the seismic shove, and that will be the go bell for the Mysterious Monkeys as they turn back towards the back. Yeah, Memento. Whoa, Memento, Memento is a long way away from his team. Upset's gonna jump forward though. Costu takes a chunk, Memento flashes away. Exhaust came down as well. Schalke trying to go for a catch, but cannot make it work. Trying to put the health bars low on MM, so maybe they even force a recall out. MM still want to go for the Baron, so they grab the Honey Fruit, look towards the Baron after healing up a little bit, and look, bot lane, Smitty J has to stay down there. Upset even coming down to make sure they don't get damage onto the towers. Push back the next wave and try and deny the Baron push that's going to come from Mysterious Monkeys, but... These inhibs, even if they come up soon, will be dropped very quickly by MM. There are the inhibs starting to come up. But you've got such strength from the Mysterious Monkeys. We talked about their team fighting, and that's exactly what they want to do. All they want is a big fight now with this 7,000 gold lead, and that will spell the end for Schalke, because unless Schalke play it to an absolute T and mechanically perfectly, you do not overcome an 8,000 gold deficit. It's just such a large deficit, but here comes the Weaver's Wall. We have to see how the play comes from this kick. It has been such a terror. Uh, just trying to walk forward, trying to hit anybody with a frozen mallet that he can, and it has worked well. Upset has completed his last Whisper, though. Not quite seen the, four, the third and a half item out from Yuki. There's a double Knight's Vow on the side of Shalke Nullfear, only a single four Mysterious Monkeys. There are some tiny, tiny glimmers of hope if you're a Shalke Nullfear fan, but you should still be looking towards the third game and perhaps just a little bit of confidence here for Shalke. Look at how afraid Smitty J has to play back away 
Upset's coming down now, and as soon as he ends up showing, it means Mysterious Monkeys are more likely to commit on the top side, and that means Upset has to come back up towards there. Mid lane inhibitor is about to respawn. We just heard the alert come through, but Kikis just takes the bottom one himself. They're waiting now for he's the mega, mega. though. Upset jumps in, kick is forced away, but that is, as you say, where Mysterious Monkeys are going to go in. Cosby jumped off towards the backside, the Featherstorm comes out, Amazing's killed Memento, and now the Mysterious Monkeys need to deal with the rest of these four members of Schalke. Upset is looking for the resets, you can see, Ooh. he can see them in his eyes, but Kickers jumps in, goes mini. A kill on to Smitty J as well as the Mysterious Monkeys advance. And we said it would be a difficult fight for Schalke to take. They are on the losing side. Yeah, two members dead. Flash forward from Yuki, oh, and he's got him. That crit at the end, that was beautiful. And the Mysterious Monkeys will be able to close out this game. You have to think Alistair's gone down towards the bottom side to bring in that Baron buff minions. And they are looking at only two members of Schalke in defense. And from what a crazy game game one was, back and forth with a backdoor to end it, Mysterious Monkeys clean, controlled last 10 minutes of this game. And they are just going to walk through the base looking unfazed to even up the series. A 10,000 gold lead and only conceding a single kill and two towers across the course of the map. What a change it was for game two as Mysterious Monkeys even out at one and one. You couldn't have had two very more different games at that point, Medic. Like, Mysterious Monkey's looking almost like a different team here. Playstyle maintains some of the same aspects, but it was less just about the side lane push. They had more options. It wasn't the all-in side lane like Diorelia, where you can only take very specific skirmishes. You had the catch-all top laner of, I can team fight you, and I can split push against you on Nah. And I have to feel it's going to be banned away in the next game. There's going to be a high contested pick in this series for the rest of the three games if we end up going that far. I totally agree with you, Stress. And I think we, we were talking about it when Mysterious Monkeys were making these early plays, how clean they were, how effective they were, and how practiced they seemed to be. This composition and this style really seems to be uh, Mysterious Monkey's wheelhouse. This yeah. seems to be where they are comfortable. And as much as we talk about Kikis and Amazing, because that's where our focus came in early, I actually think this game, CosQ, Yuki, Dreams did a good job at the same time. They were able to take the objectives, assist in the way that Mysterious Monkeys were always trading two for one on objectives. And then the fights, Dreams was always getting the, the engages. The damage out of Yuki was good. None of the three of them actually died. Superb play by them, and we said before even the first game started, can Kozku play at a higher level against these Challenger Series mid laners? And he showed that today. His, his ability to lock off fights with that Weaver's Wall, his ability, his seismic shoves, yeah. always on point, allowed for the follow-up from Amazing as well. Mysterious Monkey's looking a lot stronger. Yeah, the Talia was, was good out of Kozku. I don't have a whole lot of complaints, especially the way that they said, okay, let's bring Amazing into the into the mid lane early on, because remember this game started with Memento basically just queuing away the red buff at level three yep. from Amazing. And then he just revisits mid lane and goes, okay, now we're fine. Yeah, it's the second time we've seen that early pressure from Memento not really paying off when he came into the mid game. And the second time as well, we've seen Amazing stealing away a Baron from Memento. It's just, the smite was so early coming out from Memento in this and Amazing was just able to get it. Yeah, we can rewatch how it exactly went. So Schalke, of course, committing to this as they were trying to get kick STP. Repel comes up, Smite comes down that from Amazing was so early in the Memento. Last one. Yeah, in the last one, Memento didn't actually get his Smite off in that exchange. And at that point, Mysterious Monkeys were already starting to fight. Amazing did have the level advantage on that at the after the Baron play, so MM very comfortable from that moment. That moment was the turning point of the entire game, and MM from there does never look back. Yeah, they were ahead in the early game, but we've seen how much that can collapse for them. Shaoko, on the other hand, just not really able to get on board. Perhaps a little bit too much scaling, perhaps a little bit a few lanes that are too weak in the early game for them to actually be able to capitalize on Memento's early pressure. And this is something that plagued them when they played against the Misfits Academy in playoffs as well. They tended to draft towards losing lanes and just weren't able to actually get a foothold in the game. Yeah, this worked against Team RB because RB were, remember, quite a lane-focused team where they would start running out of options. They weren't quite coordinated on when they were going aggressive. Well, Mysterious Monkeys, this game, said, okay, well, this is what we've been practicing with the Rift Herald. We'll show it to you. We'll get your, all of your towers. 
and basically just continue to take objective after objective. And that was what we expected to see out of an LCS team when you actually have that objective focus and make that game plan work for you. Yeah, well, we're deadlocked after two games between Schalke 04 and the Mysterious Monkeys. Find out which teams take the lead after the break. No flash from him for Kedro. And gonna get the seismic shove down onto Kedro. He uses the heal. Memento's here. Kedro oh. will finally take a rock to the back. And Memento is unable to save his mid lane. Oh. Mysterious Monkey, and now perhaps they'll look for the fight. I cannot believe it makes it that twice. As oh. Pikachu jumps in, and three man Nard draws them back. Shalk and Fear continue to fall. A double kill for Koski. Where Mysterious Monkey is going to go in. Koski drops off towards the backside. The Feather Storm comes out. Amazing's killed Memento, and now the Mysterious Monkeys need to deal with the rest of these four members of Shalk. Upset is looking for the resets. You can see, Ooh. he can see the 10,000 gold lead and only conceding a single kill and two towers across the course of the map. What a change it was for game. Two is Mysterious Monkeys even out at one and one.